It's World War II in the United States. The majority of able-bodied men have been drafted into the army and shipped across the ocean, leaving the home front vulnerable to a new, unexpected threat. Forest fires. With very few firefighters left and many resources repurposed for the war effort, communities surrounding America's national parks were right in the crosshairs of a potential disaster, unless something was done to educate the public about preventative measures. In 1944, the U.S. Forest Service introduced Smokey the Bear, a brown shovel-toting grizzly bear wearing only a campaign hat and a pair of blue jeans. This character, intended to educate the public on how they could do their part to help the environment, struck a chord with the American people, and the campaign was so successful that Smokey Bear is still well known to this day. However, as the decades passed, Smokey became the mascot of other forms of environmentalism, and it was feared that, with Smokey handling so much, his original message of preventing forest fires would be lost. In order to combat this issue, he would need a friend, a small, wide-eyed owl sporting green pants and a feather-tipped hat. His name was Woodsy, and he had something to say. Well, give a hoot! Don't pollute! Smokey Bear has got a pal who was always on the prowl. Woodsy is his name, you know, he's the anti-pollution owl. Creating a mascot character that will withstand the test of time is an imperfect science. One of the oldest examples of a lasting mascot is one you might not be expecting, Babendum, or as he is better known, the Michelin Man. The simple man made of Michelin signature tires made his first appearance all the way back in 1894 and continues to be utilized to this day. Compare this to Izzy, the mascot of the 1966 Summer Olympics in Atlanta. His creators believed that they could invent a mascot that would outlive the Olympics, rushing to release a video game and an animated TV special, but his reception was so negative that he quickly fell to obscurity. While Woodsy the anti-pollution owl is definitely not quite as reviled as Izzy, he's proven unable to keep pace with his older companion, Smokey Bear. Introduced in 1971, Woodsy was created with the best of intentions. He was an advocate for nature. He encouraged children to pick up litter. He called out litter bugs and polluters as he saw them, giving a hoot hoot on his trusty whistle. His species, the owl, was chosen because owls were well known in both rural and city settings, so he could appeal to all children. Designed to be perfect child-hugging height, and armed with the pipes of Sterling Holloway, the original voice of Winnie the Pooh, Woodsy had a lot going for him. However, the moment he stepped into the world, Woodsy found himself facing off with a clean-cut, smooth-talking western lad named Johnny Horizon, who hated pollution just as much as he, and had the backing of Boral Ives and Johnny Cash. <laughs> Johnny Horizon was created in 1969 by the Bureau of Land Management as an advocate for clean water, planting trees, and to help the country beautify itself by its 200th birthday. His campaign was not unsuccessful, but his appeal was very narrow. He was white, he was western, and he was male. The USDA believed that a character like Woodsy, the sweet owl specifically manufactured to have universal appeal, would be more effective in spreading the message. Still, the Bureau of Land Management railed against Woodsy, and the two characters begrudgingly coexisted for almost a decade before Johnny Horizon was officially retired in 1982. Woodsy had won his first battle, but there was much more to come. What's the matter, Woodsy? We picked up the litter! Yeah, you did great. But this vandalism ruins little kids' swings. Oh. And really hurts the trees. Can we fix it? The only way to fix it is to stop it. We'll help you spread the word. Stop vandalism! Stop vandalism! Thanks, kids. If you help me stop vandalism, we'll, we'll keep right. America looking good. Give, Give a hoot. hoot. Don't Give pollute. Hoot. Hoo, hoo. Curiously, not long after Woodsy was introduced, people began writing letters to the government, claiming to have designed the character in a poster contest. Despite the sheer amount of claims, the USDA has always denied this. Officially, Woodsy was created by four people, Betty Height, Harold Bell, Chuck Williams, and Glenn Kovar. According to a 2012 article from Forest History Today, the numerous claims could be due to a case of mistaken memory, as the character was potentially included on coloring sheets as part of a Smokey the Bear coloring contest. No documentation of a contest to design Woodsy has ever come to light, 
but the continuing specificity of the claims, all of them mentioning a poster contest, is interesting to say the least. Help Woodsy spread the word. Tell your friends what you've heard. In the city or in the woods, trees keep America. Trees keep America. Please keep America. Looking good. Hoot, hoot. Woodsy would go on hooting through the 80s until something unexpected happened. The northern spotted owl was added to the endangered species list in 1990. The spotted owl, indigenous to the Pacific Northwest, had suffered a severe loss of habitat due to logging in the area. Its inclusion to the endangered species list resulted in tighter restrictions for loggers, which made the owls a symbol for the death of people's livelihoods. While Woodsy was not designed specifically with the spotted owl in mind, he was quickly co-opted by editorial cartoonists on both sides of the fight. This made Woodsy, and owls in general, incredibly controversial, which unfortunately resulted in the character being phased out. Children in the 90s did not grow up with Woodsy. When Smokey Bear made an appearance in the classroom, Woodsy was hauntingly absent. In 1997, Woodsy would find new life. Gone were the days that Woodsy frolicked around and tooted his little whistle. He was now more hip and had a new slogan, Lend a Hand, Care for the Land. Woodsy in the house with an owl rap About taking some garbage off the map Trash from your breakfast yesterday Can turn into plant food the Woodsy way The Woodsy way, yo, the Woodsy way It's a rubbish rap, it's a rubbish rap Y'all think it's garbage, but it's not It's a rubbish rap, it's a rubbish rap Y'all think it's garbage, but it's not Go Woodsy, go Woodsy, go Woodsy, go Woodsy However, the introduction of a brand new Woodsy meant something else. Old Woodsy had to go. As property of the United States government, Woodsy's public image was heavily policed. In order to assert the new Woodsy design as the only Woodsy design, old costumes had to be taken out of commission and replaced with new ones. However, the costumes couldn't be allowed to make their way into the hands of collectors, resellers, or worse, people who would besmirch the name of good old Woodsy Owl. So they had to burn him. You must destroy, oh, you must destroy Beyond all recognition You gotta burn him down, you gotta burn him down Beyond all recognition mm -hmm. In a fashion that Woodsy's friend, Smokey the Bear, surely would not approve of, all old Woodsy Owl costumes had to be incinerated under the careful watch of a USDA Forest Service law officer until destroyed beyond recognition. Nowadays, Woodsy is barely a presence. Through no fault of his own, he has seemingly fallen by the wayside, his new design never really resonating with a new generation. While he's still listed right alongside Smokey the Bear on the USDA website, and you can still get Woodsy teaching materials for classrooms, he simply lacked the staying power to continue on. Perhaps someday, Woodsy will get another redesign and manage to find more cultural relevance. But until then, Smokey the Bear travels this road alone, fondly remembering the days when he had his owl buddy by his side. In other news, you can buy a new Woodsy Owl costume for $2,000, so run out and do that. <laughs>